<coughs> so, bloeden now with that. Uh, Happy New Year to all present today um, at our education scrutiny meeting on the 10th of January 2022. Um, if I could just let you know that this meeting will be recorded and made available to view via the Council's website, except for discussions involving confidential or exempt items. Therefore, the images, audio of those individuals speaking will be publicly available to all via the recording on the Council website, and that's at www.kafili.gov.uk. OK, item one is to receive apologies for absence. We have three noted. That's uh, Councillor Hardacre, Councillor Martin James and Councillor Oliver. Um, can I ask um, the committee clerk, have there been any other uh, um, apologies given? Yes, Chair. Also from Councillor Julian Simmons. Thank you very much. So declarations of interest now. Councillors and officers are reminded of their personal responsibility to declare any personal and or prejudicial interest in respect of any item of business on this agenda. In accordance with the Local Government Act 2000, the Council's constitution and the code of conduct for both councillors and officers. Can I ask, are there any declarations, please? Um, I believe we have uh, an observer today, um, and that's Councillor uh, James Pritchard. If you'd like to speak now, James, that's fine. Yes, uh, <clears throat> thank you, Chair. Good to see education again. Um, yeah, I'm in an observing capacity, obviously, as a Vice Chair of Governors at Placervelle in Primary School. Obviously, I won't be taking part in any of the discussion or the vote, but um, I'd like to declare an interest as i am clearly got an interest in that agenda item. OK, thanks, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor. So um, we move on to um, item number three. That's to approve and sign the following minutes of Education Scrutiny Committee held on the 2nd of November. So if we could just check for accuracy firstly, please. And that's pages one, two, three, four, and five. Could I have somebody to move that they approve the minutes, please? Yeah, I move. Thank you. And a seconder? Yep, yeah, second. Lovely. We are going to be voting on this, so if the vote will come up momentarily, and if you could please vote, vote, do put your vote in. Thank you, everyone. I gather that was carried unanimously. OK, so the item four is to approve and sign the following minutes of the Special Education Scrutiny Committee held on the 2nd of December. So just checking for accuracy there. So um, we have pages seven and eight in your packs. Can I have somebody to move that, please? Yeah, move it. Thank you. And a seconder? Yeah, yeah seconder. Second. Thank you. And then we'll go to the vote, please. That should be in front chair, of you. Chair, can I, Chair, sorry to yes. interrupt at this point, but I didn't have anything to vote on last time, and I am going this time. Okay. Don't know why um, it is. I'm in the same boat as well. Okay. If you could... um. Uh, We'll submit the vote, and if Mark could ask us then um, if there's anybody else who hasn't been able to vote and take the names, please. <laughs> yes, Chair, no problem. It's momentarily appeared online as a form, but the, it doesn't give you any capability of voting for, against, or abstaining. Oh, so can I ask what your vote is? Four. 
Thank you. Okay, so. Um, you, want my, you want my vote, Chair? Yes, please, Derek. Four. Thank you. That's carried, Derek. Chair, and there's two, uh, two uh, verbal votes to add to the count. That's wonderful. Thank you very much, Mark. Item five, consideration of any matter referred to the committee in accordance with the call-in procedure. Do we have any matters called in today, Mark? No, Chair, no matters have been called in for this meeting. Lovely, thank you. So moving on to um, item six, the Education Scrutiny Committee Forward Work Programme. Um, as discussed in the um, pre-meeting, oh, we got... Tracy Mill Millington with the hand up. Yeah, just to let you know, Chair, that I'm unable to vote too. All right, OK. Did you want to record your vote on, on the minutes? Yes, four. Thank you very much. Thank you. OK, the Education um, Forward Work Programme now on item six. Um, uh, we did have a discussion on the pre-meeting. Um, can I ask firstly, is anybody any questions or anything that they would like to see on the forward work programme? Shall I just um, introduce the report, Chair? Yes, please. OK, thank you, Chair. So um, as the Chair was saying, members are asked to consider the forward work programme alongside the Cabinet work programme as appended to the report and to suggest any changes. Um, if members are happy, I would like to seek approval to publish the Education Scrutiny Committee Forward Work Programme um, with any alterations which might be suggested at this meeting onto the Council's website. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Mark. Um, I have, I have um, a question on the progress of a report that we had um, requested by this committee previously, a report on the provision of Welsh medium teachers. I understand that um, it's on. Uh, uh, it's going to be a confirmed date, but I was wondering whether we have any progress on that. Yes, that's right, Chair. It was uh, suggested at the meeting on the second of November that yes. we have a report on the provision of Welsh medium teaching staff, and as yet, no date has been uh, has been put forward for a um, report. Um, I don't know if there's any other officers who might be able to shed light on on that uh, request. Uh, is Kerry Cole with us today? Yes, I am. <laughs> Hiya, Kerry. Uh, would you would you th think or imagine that we could have um, the report before um, the end of March? Um, we were linking in with the WESP timescales. That was the reason for um, completing that, completing that consultation process and seeing if anything came out of that to add to it. But I would imagine, um, when is when is the scrutiny in March? 29th. 29th, so it would have to be ready the end of February. Yeah, that, that's probably going to be fine. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you very much, okay. Kerry. Because we, we may have a change of committee <laughs> with, the, with the new elections, you see. So, okay. No, that's fine. Thank you very much. Okay. So, if we can um, just then, can I have somebody to move the recommendations, please? Chair, sure. can I come in, please? Oh, yes. Sorry. Yes, Councillor Roberts. Is that okay? Yes. Thank you. Um, Somewhere in the longer term of forward work program, I thought we were going to have, I understand this is short in front of us, we were going to have an item on the new Welsh curriculum. Yes, yes. we decided that. And it's just um, November's meeting, we mentioned the fact that Dr Ellen Jones had published her book, History Grounded, Hannes and Eintir. I'm only wondering, might it be possible to have a look when we go into looking at the new Welsh curriculum that we especially look at humanities because that would bring in the teaching of, of history and if we could log that into forward work programme please. Dichra. I certainly would be all for that. I think um, the contribution that Dr Ellen Jones has done and she's a local local lady from Astrimanach 
Um, going up again. We'll go down in history itself, actually. So um, I would be all for that. Could I could I ask everyone um, to um, raise their hand if they're in agreement with putting that on uh, the forward work programme, please? Mine as well. So we have seven hands raised, Chair. OK. Are there anybody having difficulties with raising their hand? Would you prefer a roll call, Chair, so I can read out Yes, I, I think that, that might be um, a good idea, actually. If you could call the roll call then for me, um, Mark, I'd much appreciate it. OK, so this is for the recommendation um, in the in the report um, and with the inclusion of a, um, a, a future report on um, when, when we're discussing the new curriculum um, concentrating on on Welsh history uh, and in particular um, the, the, the work by Dr Ellen Jones in this in this publication so um, if everyone's in agreement I'll start by calling out names Councillor Aldworth are you for in again? agreement thank you Councillor Andrews yes Mark thank you Councillor Bevan fully agree Councillor Collis. Fully agree. Councillor David. For. Councillor Freena Childs. Yeah, fully agree. Councillor Havard. No. Uh, Councillor Jones. Councillor Miles. Agree. Councillor Parry. Agree. Councillor Roberts. Katino, agree. Thank you. Councillor Stone. Agreed. Mr. Weston. Fully agree. And Mrs. Millington. Agree. And Mr. James. Yeah, M4. So that's 13 for and one against chair so that's carried thank you very much lovely so if we could go um do we have um is that the vote also for um the the final work program as well mark yes yes that's correct chair thank you very much okay so we'll go on to item seven and um, that is to receive and consider some cabinet reports. Could I ask the scrutiny officer, have any of the reports been brought forward for review at this meeting? No, Chair, none of the reports on the agenda have been brought forward. Thank you. Um, item eight, um, and this is the 21st Century Schools um, and Colleges Band B programme. Could I ask um, Councillor Whiting to introduce this report, please? Yeah, of course. Uh, thank you, Chair, and a happy New Year to all members. Um, this report is to update members on the consultation responses which were received from the public consultation on the 21st Century Schools Band of Proposal to am amalgamate Lankayak Junior School and Lankarban Infant School to create a new primary school. As members will see from the report, due to the nature of the proposals, the Council is required to undertake a formal consultation process as set out in the School Organisation Code 2018. Feedback and consultation responses from members of the public and other stakeholders are key in the development of these proposals. The consultation opened on the 20th of October 2021 and closed on the 1st of December. Responses were encouraged from members of the public the school community, including People Voice, elected members and other stakeholders, including Estin. This committee also gave its comments as a consultee and unanimously endorsed the proposal at its meeting on the 1st of November 2021. Following the closure of the consultation on the 1st of December, members will see a consultation report has been produced 
and attached as Appendix 1 to this report. This report outlines the number, type and issues raised by the responses that have been received and the Council has provided a reply or clarification to those responses. The consultation attracted 11 responses with 10 in support of the proposal and one who did not um, identify either strongly for or against the proposal. And I believe, believe Andrea West will provide an overview of the comments that have been received and is available to answer any questions. The next steps on this proposal are that Cabinet must now give due regard to the content of the consultation report and determine whether it is appropriate to move to the next stage in the process, which is to proceed to statutory notice. This evening, the recommendations as contained in the report under 3.1 are that the committee uh, consider the information contained in the consultation report and B, um, endorse the recommendation to Cabinet to proceed to statutory notice in relation to the proposal to create a new primary school provision through the amalgamation of Lankayak Junior School and Lampavon Infant School. Thank you. Can I ask, are there any questions? I have no questions, but I should say I think Councillor Ross did that very, very well. <laughs> thank, thank you, Alan. Um, <laughs> Councillor Brenda Miles, please. Thank you. Um, I only really got one question, but I just wanted to comment on two things in passing. One was it was a bit disappointing that there were only 11 respondents to the consultation. Although I suspect that because the other reports are of a similar level, so I, sus I expect that's common and, and that's kind of the response that you'd, you'd expect to get in this kind of um, report to this report. Um, the other thing I'd mention in passing is on page 39, there's a reference to the, the Philly County Borough Council Strategic Equality Plan. And just to say it's referencing the wrong one, it's referencing the old one that um, came to an end in 2020 and should really be referencing the new one. Um, but anyway, moving on to my sort of question, um, it was to do with the, it's on page 48, and it's to do with the response that we had back from Estin. Now, I thought this was a really good report and very comprehensive, but I see Estin picked up on a couple of small things that they thought the report could have covered um, in greater detail. Um, the first point being made that the 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 um, the report does not appear to take account of the local authority stroke consortium view on the quality of leadership and management at the schools. They then go on to talk about um, the intentions for the governing body and whether they're going to merge or remain uh, or, or be a federation arrangement. And then thirdly. It refers to the needs of special education uh, children not being um, considered. And I wondered if the, if the authors would like to comment on, on those points that Estin have uh, raised at all. Um, uh, if I can call in I'll Andrew West. Forward. If I can call in Andrea West to answer your question then, Brenda. Thanks. Andrea, we we don't seem to be able to hear you. We're having difficulty with um, um, Andrea West's um, mm -hmm. Wi-Fi at this can you moment. Hear me now? Yes, we can. Thank you. You can hear me. Sorry, I've got technical problems. I'm actually working off my mobile. So that's maybe the reason why you can't hear me. Do you want me to run through the actual presentation that I've actually prepared? But that may answer some of the questions that uh, Councillor Miles has raised. That would be lovely. Thank you, Andrea. OK, as I said, I'm on my mobile. So as long as I can see it. But um, I've got Lisa who's actually able to share the presentation with you. Thank you. OK, so this is a consultation report in respect of Clam Kayak Junior and Clam Arbonne Infant School amalgamation. 
with a proposal to expand the primary, the infant school site to become a primary school as from September 2024. Uh, okay, the as Councillor Whiting actually um, alluded to earlier, the school organisation code, Welsh Government School Organisation Code 2013, is the documentation that we have to follow um, in relation to um, this particular. Um, consultation and I want in particular the school organization code 2018 because what we're actually doing we're actually proposing a change to um, a maintained school I do apologize this is super small on my on my um, screen so I can hardly uh, make it out so as in previous um, consultations that we've undertaken with you what we've actually tried to do is take you through the process you can actually see where we're at in relation to this particular proposal. And as of today, we're actually at stage eight and it's to submit a report um, to Cabinet for approval to proceed to um, a statutory notice. So as members, obviously, we're asking you to um, give recommendations to actually proceed to this particular stage. And then there'll be further stages then where we'll come back to you then um, following the outcome of the statutory notice. So we're at stage eight of this, on this particular um, uh, consultation point. Slides will change. So as I said at the very beginning, what we propose to do, we're consulting, which is a consultation report, uh, because what we're actually doing, we're actually looking to um, carry out the requirements of the school organisation code. Uh, and I do really, really apologise, because as I said, this is particularly um, small for me at the moment. So what we're actually required to do, we're actually required to summarise the issues raised by the consultees, report these by means of clarification, um, and any amendments to the proposal should we have any uh, at this particular stage. As Councillor Miles alluded to, we need to set out the ESTIN response in relation to the consultation in full, which we've actually done in the report. Um, respond to the ESTIN um, response, which we've actually done as, again uh, within the full document that you've actually received um, in relation to the proposals. Next slide. Okay, so what are we proposing to do? We're proposing to amalgamate Clan Kayak Junior and Clan Babylon Infant School to create a new primary school on the existing infant school site to accommodate pupils from the ages of 3 to 11 with an anticipated completion date of September um, 2024. As part of this proposal as well, we'll also look into incorporate um, community facilities, facilities that obviously would be available outside of the school day. Um, as Councillor uh, Whiting actually said, this particular consultation ran from Wednesday the 20th of October and ended at midnight on Wednesday the um, 1st of December. We've actually given you some artist impression, impressions here and it is important to say they are, at this stage they are purely artist impressions. We are working with our uh, building consultancy to um, build up and obviously put the design forward. But at this stage, as you appreciate, it is a consultation and as such, nothing is actually set in stone. OK, as uh, Councillor White said, there was 11 responses received. Um, all of them were actually received via an online survey and they were all received through the medium of um, English. Um, we didn't receive any requests for this particular document to actually be publicised. Um, in any other um, format, you know, it would have been available should the request have been received, uh, but at this particular stage it wasn't. Next slide. So what we've actually done well, in relation to the 11 responses, and it is, it's, it's quite um, easy to actually break 11 down, as you can appreciate, because as, as Councillor Mike says, it's a very small number. We've actually broken it down there to actually show you what percentage of the 11% were parents, staff members, school governors, electric members, um, local members and other. And then what we've ob obviously tried to break it down into another way to show you all of those that supported the proposal and then the one that didn't. But it's important to say that they didn't say they didn't um, 
support the proposal, but they said they didn't feel one way or the other. So they, they didn't feel in support or they didn't feel against. And then obviously what we try to do then in a different way is show you how we've actually broken it down then. Um, parents, school governors, electric members should actually show their as a little over five percent of charge. Again, obviously then by category, um, breaking it down the way I'm actually demonstrating it to you. Next slide, please. We've actually, um, as Councillor um, Whiting actually alluded again to the fact that we incorporated the pupil voice. And these are some of the images that the, both schools actually provided to us. And I think you can agree there was you know, quite a, a great deal of pupil participation. So of those 11 um, people, obviously that didn't include the number of children that took part as part of the pupil voice. But you can see, you know, both schools actually actively took part in the consultation process. When we've, what we've actually tried to do then, we tried to pull forward from the pupil voice those areas um, that obviously came up the most. So as you can see, the, the bigger the sort of word, um, the more times it actually came up. So obviously, you know, you know, some of the children have come back so they want bright colours in the school, they want a new school uniform, they want bigger classrooms, ICT. Um, and as you can see, you know, the, the feeling is there, um, going down to very small ones, which I mentioned quite a few times, but we try to demonstrate it to you in a different way. I love the summary of responses then. Um, obviously, um, what we've tried to do, we've tried to summarise them as required as part of the school organisation code 2018. And obviously, cabinet, when we actually take them to cabinet, cabinet will actually see the full responses as they were actually received. I do apologise on my phone now. This is really impossible for me to actually see because they're so small. <laughs> so these are the general themes that are actually coming through. Um, and I'm not going to go through them individually, but you can see that the general sort of flavour um, in relation to each area. So what we're trying to do, we're trying to break it, break it down into the individual themes and actually tell you the number of times that actually came up. Um, so that's just a bit of information for you out of level. It's quite easy to summarise, but you can see uh, the areas of concern that actually came through. Um, and from memory, it was things like um, traffic management, um, you know, actually being on site when children are in situ, things like that. And we've tried to respond to them as best we can within the actual report. OK, so the first theme is the advantage of a, sing of a singly um, combined primary school. As it, parents have actually said, it's a single point of contact, uh, bringing together, together inset training days. Those of you who remember, you know, when your children had inset training days, if they were in different schools. You were then required to obviously, you know, take more time off if you were working parents to actually make sure you had cover for the, when the children weren't in school, improving the children's well-being. Um, and obviously, this is linked to attending one school, continuity of um, education. More opportunities for staff, they see it as best opportunities for staff development. And I think that addresses some of the concerns, obviously, with uh, what Estin had actually raised when um, Councillor Myers mentioned um, one of your, in one of your queries. Also, in relation to the uh, land and buildings um, raised to um, Clankayak Junior School, what they're actually saying that the actual uh, Clankayak Junior School is in the busy, the heart of Nelson itself. And, you know, from a drop off perspective, a lot of parents um, have concerns with regards to that. And that actually came through. And then they basically say an outdoor, in, uh, outdoor space can be enhanced. Um, so that's obviously been mentioned as well. The drop in and out, yeah. Next slide, please. And then community um, and educational facilities. Um, basically saying that there'll be a wider um, use of facilities for community groups, etc. And also what we're actually looking to do, we're actually looking to put childcare uh, wraparound provision on the club ad on site at the moment. So obviously that'd be incorporated then into the, the primary school um, if and when it's established. Next slide.
and as I mentioned, you know, traffic management, um, parking concerns um, at Clanvabon infants, that what we'd actually look into do, we'd actually look into um, enlarge the curtilage of the school site itself, which will um, take away some of the parking issues that are currently being experienced in the morning when they're dropping pupils off. Um, and what they're saying, in, increased traffic flow at the post site. But again, that will have to be uh, managed uh, by our building consultancy. Um, they've got a wealth of experience dealing with uh, building issues such as this. You know, and I'm sure that will be sort of afforded to this particular proposal as well going forward. The construction process and potential impact. Um, again, as I said, um, the development on site, um, they want it sort of designed and oriented in such a way that it minimises any impact on neighbouring properties. And I think one of the concerns that actually came through was from one of the 11 sort of um, respondents was they were concerned about the impact on their property. But we, we can assure the, that particular sort of resident that where we look into actually build the extension, it's the other side of the school. So there'll be no particular impact on his property as such. Um, and then obviously the, the proposal will go through a full plan um, proposal for any concerns that can obviously be expressed at that particular that. stage. But he went in on his own and he got straight in the water. Um, okay. Could I ask? And then reasonable sorry. alternatives identified. There was no reasonable alternatives that identified as part of this consultation process. So there was no other proposals put forward. So the recommendation is to amalgamate Clam, uh, KF Junior, Clam Arbon Infant School to create a new primary school on the existing infant school site. So members are asked to consider the information contained within this consultation report and members are asked to endorse the recommendations for cabinet to proceed to statutory notice. Um, as I said, there's various other um, elements as well. Um, it did come to you as consultees um, on the 2nd of November. And you can see there we actually had 12 members vote um, for, uh, none against, um, nobody abstained. So just to refresh members that when we came to you then, um, you were happy for this particular proposal to proceed to this consultation stage. Um, and that's my presentation. Thank you, Andrea. Um, Councillor Brenda Miles, has that answered the question that you had? Um, um, not really, because I was asking specifically about a response uh, to some of the, I suppose you would call them gaps that um, Estin uh, highlighted. Um, and they're on page 48 and 49 of the report. So to run right again, at the top of page 48, the quality of leadership and then governing board structure for the governing body. The um, governing body structure will be decided mm -hmm. as and when um, the proposal goes forward. Obviously, there are two separate governing bodies at the moment, um, but once uh, the proposal goes to the stage where we've had approval from Cabinet to proceed, we can then work with the governing body for um, an easy amalgamation. Um, they can e even at that stage, if they wanted to, consider going down the route of collaboration so they could start working collaboratively in readiness for the establishment of the new school. So it's early days at the moment because obviously it's only a proposal. But when we get to the stage where we, this proposal has been agreed, we will work then closely with the governing bodies of both schools to ensure that it is a smooth transition between them. And again, I don't know if Kelly wants to give a response in relation to um, the leadership side of things. Um, Kelly might be better placed to actually respond in relation to that one. Uh, so um, we haven't got any um, current issues with either school, neither school is in any form of follow up with Estin, for example. So we have no concerns about leadership in either school at the moment. Um, what we will be doing, as Andrea points out, is add into this report as we go along now and, and working with the two schools. But there are no report, there are no issues to report currently. Yeah, I sort of didn't quite understand the comment that Estin had made about do not appear to take account of the LA consortium view on the quality of leadership. So it was a bit, well, of, but it was a bit. Yeah, of... normally, um, well, it can mean that when we are doing work like this, it can mean one school is struggling and in difficulty, and that's why we're looking at 
joining schools together. We've, we've had those situations in the past. On this occasion, this is around the geography, it's around um, a belief in, in that primary education as well, but there are no issues with that are to be resolved through leadership. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, as, as this proposal develops and, and continues, that's when the discussion of how the school will look will emerge. But currently, there's no driver coming from concerns around leadership. Mm. And the last one then, thanks for that, the last one then was about uh, special educational needs and the comment that the proposal does not consider the impact of the proposals on children with special educational needs. Okay, and Kelly, do you want to answer that one? Well, I've got Sarah who just popped up, who's um, a short <laughs> next foot than me, so um, I, would, I would have. Um, Sarah? No, I'm Kerry, I'm happy for you to um, comment if you'd rather. Uh, as you say, the, it, the report does talk about um, the proposal considering the impact or not of um, the amalgamation on children with special educational needs. I think the critical element there is the impact of transition into you know a, a different environment or a, a environment that um, has been amalgamated so you know that <clears throat> of course would be a piece of work that the local authority would engage in in terms of understanding the impact of change on children mm -hmm. with additional learning needs um, so we may not have made that explicit but mm -hmm. Of course, that is work that you know would would be undertaken. Yeah, yeah, that sounds also good. Also, in relation yeah. to what Sarah's mentioned there, I suppose we've got a bonus in as much as the children who are currently in Clankay Junior School would have already been to Clanbarbon Infant School, so the element of change would be very very small because the majority. I mean, I do appreciate some children join Junior School that hasn't or you know, haven't um, gone to infants because they've moved into the area, etc. But the majority of children in that school would be familiar with clan ba clan infants anyway because obviously they would have gone there from nursery so the element of sort of change would be very very small yeah lovely okay. council okay. phil bevan yeah uh, sorry um and there uh, just a general question with regards to, i'm a, a great champion of the uh, council's building consultancy team and i just hope that they will be involved in the work with these three proposals you mentioned uh, in the design thing I, I didn't quite catch who was doing that but i assume it's julian harding and his team so they will be involved i have spoke with the Plaza Velling sites with regard to um off off-road traffic parking there and you mentioned it on one of the other schools and i I just hope it will be the same in Plaza Vellin because that's a nightmare down there. But it is, uh, it is out in, because uh, there was a time where certain, um, I don't know how, who it was, but the, they were trying to, to get the building consultancy closed down, I think, and trying to go it, send it out for consultation. But we managed to turn that around. And they've, of course, been very successful in the schools that they built. So it's good to hear that they're that still involved. I think that's really important as well, Councillor Bevan, and as much as, as I said, they've got a vast experience that we can draw on. So, you yeah. know, any concerns that parents have in relation to construction, you know, construction work taking place on site, as, as you rightly say, you know, they've got a vast amount of experience. So, we are fortunate as we have got that in-house facility yeah, yeah. to continue to work with. Yeah, good. Thanks for that. Thank you, Chair. Yeah. Thank you. Have we, have we any other questions? OK, so we could perhaps move to endorse the recommendation to Cabinet. Oh, sorry, Phil Bevan, you got your hand up again. I'm actually trying to take it down. Oh, right. OK. In that okay. case, uh, Councillor Parry, I move the recommendations, please. Thank you very much. Could I have a seconder, please? Yeah, I'll second that. It's a good move. Thank you. Could we move to the vote then, please? Just to, let you know, yeah. just to let you know, I'm having difficulty with the vote today, but I vote for. I vote for as well. Can I ask, is there anybody else having difficulty with the vote? 
Well, Derek, well, yes, me. You? Can I vote for two, please? Thank, thank you, uh, Tracy. So we have nine votes for chair um, plus the verbal votes. There's no abstentions and there's no votes against. So that's uh, carried unanimously. Lovely. I'm just trying to vote on that now <laughs> electronically. For some reason, it's, it's come up. So I've done that electronically as well. Thank you, everyone. Um, we move on to item nine. If Councillor Whiting can introduce this report, please, for a community engagement report for Plaza Bell in primary. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, similar to the previous item, um, and I hope I don't sound like a broken record tonight because there's a few of these. Um, this report is to update members on the consultation responses which were received from the public consultation on the 21st Century Schools programme proposal to build a new replacement Plaza Bell in primary school on the existing site. One difference between this proposal and the Lacayac and Lafabon proposal is that this one is exempt from the consultation processes outlined in the School Organisation Code 2018 and other relevant legislation. Um, this is because the main entrance of the school on its new site would be under one mile from the current site and the enlargement is less than 25% of the current capacity. Um, however, engagement with the community is still highly important and remains a key part in the development of this proposal. And that's why engagement with the school, as well as the wider community and other stakeholders, including Estin, was undertaken in line with the Council's consultation and engagement framework to ensure openness and transparency in our decision making process. This consultation opened on the 20th of October 2021 and closed on the 1st of December. Um, responses were encouraged from members of the public, the school community, including People Voice and elected members. This committee also gave its comments as a consultee and endorsed the proposal at its meeting on the 2nd of November last year. After the consultation closed on the 1st of December, a community engagement report was produced, which members can find as Appendix 1 to this report. This report outlines the number, type and issues raised by the responses that have been received and the Council has provided a reply and clarification to those responses. <laughs> The consultation received 15 responses, with 14 in support of the proposal and one who didn't feel strongly either way or didn't select an option. Like the previous report, I believe Andrea West will provide an overview of the comments that have been received and is available to answer any questions. The next steps on this proposal are that, are that Cabinet must now consider the content of the Community Engagement Report and determine whether it's appropriate to proceed to the planning application stage of the proposal and submit a full business case to Welsh Government. So the recommendations for scrutiny tonight are under 3.1 that members consider the information contained in the community engagement report, endorse the recommendation to Cabinet to proceed to the planning application stage and endorse the recommendation to proceed to full business case. Um, I believe Andrea um, now has another similar presentation to make on this proposal. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. I do, Chair. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yep. <laughs> That's OK. Thank you. Can I ask Lisa to bring up the um, presentation? And I do apologise. It, it does seem to be very repetitive in particular, um, these particular proposals. But obviously, because um, each one is individual, you know, it is important that when we actually do the presentation, we do cover off um, each area. But yeah, you know, yeah. it's true, um, because obviously, you know, I don't want to sort of be repetitive. So yeah. what we're looking for in relation to this proposal is that this is a community engagement report for Placerville in primary school, where we look into actually enlarge the school uh, with community facilities on the existing school site. Okay. So this particular one, as Councillor uh, Whiting alluded to, is exempt from the requirements of the school organisation code, because what we're actually proposing to do is build school, the school within the school grounds, which is less than one mile, as you can appreciate, from the existing school site. And we're not looking to increase the current capacity of the school by more than 25%. So the school organisation code in this particular instance uh, doesn't actually apply.
So this is a slightly shorter consultation process, you can see, to the Clan Baba and Clan Kayekwen, in as much as there's less sort of stages that we have to go through. This particular consultation does not require a statutory notice. So we're at point eight, as you can see here, and the next stage then is to proceed to planning application stage and tender process. And then following that, we will actually submit a full business case to Welsh Government uh, for final approval to proceed. So the consultation stage, as I said, this, this is a spectrum of engagement approach uh, because we wanted to actually engage with the community um, and as such, we felt we would follow um, the same process that we'd undertaken um, for the Clan Baban and Clan Kaya uh, proposal, albeit um, we, there wasn't a statutory requirement for to us actually to do so. So what we've actually tried to do here is summar summarise the responses received within the document, um, give clarification into the emerging themes and give a recommendation to actually proceed. So the proposal was to create an enlarged a replacement class of Ellen primary school in the ground of the existing school site to accommodate future projected demand from within the area. The new school will accommodate 420 pupils plus nursery with anticipated completion date of September 2024. I think it's important to mention at this particular stage, when we say we'll eventually have the capacity of 420, obviously we'll those children are not going to sort of appear overnight because these are children that are projected through demand. So what we would propose to do, very similar as we propose with Congwydon, is actually put a reduced admission number in at the time of opening and actually uh, increase it incrementally until it reaches full capacity. That then wouldn't create too many surplus places and also it protects neighbouring schools from children sort of emerging out. Um, I think they have some of the themes that actually were concerns from Welsh Government as well when we actually um, submitted the proposal. So like the Clan Barber and Clan Kaya proposal, we are looking to incorporate um, community facilities into this particular school. And I think one of the proposals that actually came through was a sort of bugger with a three um, multi-use Graham's area uh, with a sort of 3G sort of surface that could be used both by the school and the wider community. But, you know, it is important to say at this stage, it is a proposal and obviously these particular proposals are not actually set in stone. So again, the consultation period ran from Wednesday, the 20th of October, and it finished at midnight on Wednesday, the, 20, uh, the 1st of December. So again, what I've actually, we've actually tried to do here is give you an indication of the possible look for this particular school and what we've actually used artist impression of a typical primary school. Again, this will be something that uh, building consultancy along with ourselves would look to sort of uh, develop in consultation with both the head teacher and the governing body. And I think also you know, the pupils within the school, because we need to take on board any sort of views that they have as well going forward. Okay, we did receive slightly more responses in, in relation to this particular proposal. So we actually received 15 responses, 14 of which were um, online, and then one was received via email. And again, I think it's important to stress that all the responses came in through the medium of English. Um, so what we've tried to do again is summarise uh, the themes going through the document, and I'll, I'll take you through those um, through, as we go through the presentation. So like with the previous one, what we've actually tried to do, we've break, broken it down into um, the 15 people that actually responded, what percentage they were, obviously parents, staff members, um, local residents and others. So, you know, we've actually broken it down to show you the level of response that was actually received. The question two then asked um, to indicate um, the following sort of statements and actually reflected the views about the proposal. And as you can see, the vast majority were in support of the proposal, and there was one that didn't feel strongly one way or the other. 
So we've been actually shown it in the percentage on that basis. And again, the categories then by response, um, you can see a large percentage actually supported the proposal. So we're actually just trying to show you when we break it down, local residents, parents um, and staff members, we're trying to break it down into the percentage and then the response then by category. As with the last proposal, we've tried to demonstrate to you the activities of the pupil voice. Um, this particular school has got a very strong eco council um, and they were quite sort of um, vocal in what they actually require going forward. And it's hoped that when we move forward with this particular proposal, that we can incorporate the um, eco council and they can actually work with building consultancy to make sure that their views are taken on board. Um, and I think, you know, it has to be said that they seem to be a very um, strong group going forward. So we'll obviously try to, to bring that on board in relation to areas such as decarbonisation, etc. Again, exactly the same as the last one. The bigger the word, the more times it was actually mentioned. And you can see here again, exactly the same as uh, Clavano and Clankayach. They're saying that they would like bigger uh, classrooms. I think the, the solar panels is something that came through from the Eco Council. Um, and having spoken to the head teacher, I think, you know, they have got quite a sort of um, strong view um, and are very informed in relation to sort of their decision making, in particularly in that area. Um, they would like a bigger hall. Um, they would like more storage. They need a gym. They would like a pool, but I don't think that's going to be an option going forward in this proposal. Unfortunately, the Welsh Government wouldn't give us that much funding. But obviously we've tried to demonstrate to you the pupil voice uh, as a whole we haven't been very you know we haven't been selective we've actually shown you everything that's come through to us and again then um we were asked to summarize the consultate the sort of responses that we've actually received um, we've tried to sort of pull through the general theme as part of this particular report and obviously this will assist cabinet in the decision making process but Cabinet, again, uh, as they did with the last uh, proposal, they will actually receive the responses in full so they can see you know, the general theme as it's, as it's come through. Then in relation to question four, these are the themes that we've actually received and we've actually broken down the number of times that somebody's responded in, in uh, relation to particular sort of areas. And I do apologise again, I'm on my phone. It's very, very small. I, cannot see, I can't read the themes off for you. Okay, so the advantages of having a new and enlarged school building. As you can see, people are saying it'd be a better learning environment and facilities that had a number of mentions um, at, at the moment, plus a very in primary school. Even though it's a primary school on the same site, it is very disjointed. There's two main buildings and there's a lot of sort of like outdoor buildings and sort of a maze effect outside that the one class, you know, leads to. It says the importance of outdoor space and play. This is a very sort of large sort of area for Plaza Vellin and obviously once the um, if the proposal goes forward once the existing school is demolished that would obviously revert back then into a play area for the children. Um, positive impact on the decarbonisation agenda as I said you know the Eco Council are very sort of strong they have some views and with this particular proposal we would be looking to um, focus as much as we possibly can to become a net zero carbon school so this would be one of the excited initiatives as an authority we'd like to take forward. Um, the community and intergenerational inter uh, facilities, uh, wider use of facilities for the community. Um, again, as I said, you know, the multi-use games area may be available for the community in the evenings. Um, it is a requirement of Welsh Government in relation to the funding element of all these proposals that we do introduce community facilities. So obviously one of the things we'd be sort of asked by Welsh Government is to demonstrate how we're actually taking this forward um, in relation to the proposal. And obviously um, it would be um, subject to um, cabinet approval in relation to the actual design.
traffic management. Um, I think Councillor Bevan mentioned that there has been um, historic parking issues uh, for Plas of Ellen, um, where the majority of parents have been parking in um, the housing estate, which is attached to the school. And there's, you know, it's, it's amounted to sort of a lot of concerns in relation to ongoing parking issues. And I think what we're actually proposing is a part of this is where we're going to be siting the school and then demolishing the existing school. It would be allow a better drop off facility for parents, turning points, etc., which hopefully will um, eliminate any concerns that the residents outside have in relation to parents dropping off in the mornings. <clears throat> and also then, obviously, I think one of the things we had as well, again, like Class of Ellen and um, Clanvabon, sorry, Clanvabon and Clanfeach, is in relation to sort of um, the making sure that everybody is safe whilst the um, work is going on. The increased traffic as part of the proposal and the impact on the surrounding area. Um, the majority of these children will actually live quite close to the school as well. Uh, but obviously, this will go through a full planning application and obviously highways would have to be involved throughout the process. The consultation process and potential impact, um, timelines uh, linked to construction. I think obviously residents are concerned that they will be disrupted to them when there's uh, construction vehicles on site, but obviously they'll have to be managed accordingly. Um, and also then any alternatives identified for the remaining land I think people were concerned that we would be selling off the existing school site, but that isn't the case. As I said, they would be converted into um, a play area and drop off facilities for the children. No reasonable alternatives again, exactly with this. Uh, the previous one was suggested as a result of the consultation process. And as such, the recommendation is to proceed with the proposal. Um, so members are asked to consider the information contained within the community engagement report um, and members are asked to endorse the recommendations to cabinet to proceed to the planning application stage and then obviously following the planning application and tender stage full submission of the business case to Welsh Government. Um, I will remind members again that on the 2nd of November we actually brought this to you as consultees and we've actually given you then again saying 12 for none against and that there was no um, people have actually absconded from the uh, vote. So basically, um, as what we're looking at in relation to time scales, um, scrutiny and cabinet now in um, January, uh, February then um, 2022 through to April 2024 is the planning application stage, tender stage, full business case, and then subject to all of those being approved, then obviously it'd be going through to full consult, uh, sorry, to construction. And then September 2024, we've opened, fingers crossed, that the new school will actually open. Thank you. Can I have Councillor Carol Andrews now then, please? Yeah, just a quick question. Um, I Obviously, I'm unfamiliar with the Plaza of Ellen site, but um, I've, I've worked in a school when um, building work has been done, and I just wanted to make sure, ensure that I'm sure it will. It's a, a rhetorical question, really, that the safety of pupils and staff are going to be maintained while you know the new building is being built and the demolition of the of the form of the old site, really. Yeah, as, as I said, and um, I think Councillor Bevan has mentioned as well. I uh, will build a consultancy team of work to us on school projects for a number of years, and I can assure you, you know, they'll be involved throughout this process, and obviously. We wouldn't get planning application unless we were able to satisfy all of the requirements. So, you know, I can assure members that this will be done with the, the, the health and safety of the children and the staff in the school being paramount. Thank you. If that's the case, I'm happy to move the recommendations when everybody else has answered the, asked the questions. Thank you. Okay. Councillor Aldworth. Thank you, Chair. Um, yes. Um, I'm just wondering, do, do you have to actually decant the children, Andrea, uh, whilst works are going ahead? No, Councillor Aldworth, um, the, school, the school site is such that where we're actually proposing to build the school is down to an embankment, down below the existing school. So the current school could be fenced off as such, the construction could take place without the children being disrupted at all. 
Uh, well, that's brilliant. Um, I'd like to second uh, Councillor Andrew's proposal that this goes to the next stage, which is to Cabinet. I'm all for this recommendation of a new school. Brilliant. Thank you, Councillor Aldworth. Councillor Bevan has a question. Well, I'd like to thank the uh, uh, the two members there for proposing the school in my area, which I supported fully. Um, from Councillor Andrew's point of view, it's wood and glass. I should imagine a strong wind will, will blow it over. There's not going to be much construction problem with it. It's always been a, a problem school right from the start. And of course, our um, cons building consultancy team uh, were involved in some pretty big projects on comprehensive schools. And there's ne never been an issue. They've been very good. So I have every confidence in their ability to make sure that these schools are built properly. Wonderful. Well, we can go clearly straight to the vote then if there are no other questions. Um, <laughs> Councillor Andrews has uh, uh, moved the recommendation and Councillor Aldworth has second. Can we move to the vote, please? Lovely. Amazing. Bloody politics and education. Can I do a verbal vote, please? Certainly, uh, Tracy. I'm for. Thank you. Chair, can I make a verbal vote to us? Councillor Freena Childs, I've lost all connectivity on my PC, so I'm coming, coming through my phone now. OK, thank, thank you, oh. Andrew. And I'd be for as well, please. Thank you. It's been carried uh, unanimously, Chair. Um, we had uh, 12 votes for, um, no abstentions and no votes against, and there's two verbal votes, so a total of um, 14 votes for. That's lovely. Thank you very much, Mark. Right, we'll move on to um, item number 10, and I'll hand over to Ross writing again, and this is um, uh, the engagement report for the Centre for Vulnerable Learners. Yeah, thank you, Chair. It's me again. Um, this report is subject members on the consultation uh, responses, um, which have been received from the public consultation on the 21st Century Schools programme proposal to establish a new centre for vulnerable learners, also known as a pupil referral unit, on the site of the former Lanfright Comprehensive School site. Um, like the Plaza Vellum proposal, the proposed CVL is exempt from the consultation processes outlined in the School Organisation Code 2018 and other relevant legislation. Um, this is because it's a pupil referral unit and these are exempt. However, clearly engagement with the community must and will still play a key part in the development of this proposal. And that's why engagement with the local community has been undertaken, again in line with the Council's consultation and engagement framework, to make sure there is a clear openness and transparency in our decision making process. The consultation opened on the 20th of October uh, 2021 and closed on the 1st of December. Responses were encouraged from members of the public, elected members and other stakeholders, including pupils in multiple EOTAS or education other than at school settings and Destin. The committee, this committee also gave its comments as a consultee and you endorse the proposal at its meeting on the 2nd of November 2021. After the consultation closed on the 1st of December, a community engagement report was produced, which members can find as Appendix 1 to this report. This report outlines the number, type and issues raised by the responses that have been received, and the Council has provided a reply or clarification to those responses. The consultation received 20 responses, with 16 in support of the proposal, one not in support of the proposal and three did not express whether they were in support or do not support the proposal. Like the previous report, I believe Andrea West will provide an overview of the comments that have been received and is available to answer any questions after her presentation. The next steps on this proposal are like the Plaza Vellum proposal that Cabinet must now consider the content of the community engagement report 
and determine whether it's appropriate to proceed to plan an application stage of this proposal and submit a full business case to our government. So the recommendations for scrutiny tonight are under 3.1, that members A, consider the information contained in the community engagement report, B, endorse the recommendation to cabinet to proceed to plan application stage, and C, endorse the recommendation to proceed to full business case. Thank you. Okay, can I check in? Can you hear me if the Dan drop lost connection? Yeah, you can hear you. Okay, thank you. Right, the final report or uh, presentation this evening is in relation to a community engagement report for um, the Centre for Vulnerable Learners. Um, and what we're actually proposing is to um, provide a facility on the former Poplar Frith Comprehensive School site. OK, exactly the same. As I said, the, the, these um, sort of presentations are repetitive, so I'm not going to go through it word by word. Exactly the same as we did for um, Plas of Ellen. This particular proposal is actually exempt from the requirements of the School Organisation Code 2018 because the um, requirements for any sort of consultation for a pupil referral unit, which the Centre of Vulnerable Learners is technically known as, um, it doesn't require um, any sort of consultation uh, for some reason is a very much a grey area within this particular document and as such we weren't required to do so but obviously for transparency and a balanced uh, reporting sort of decision making pro process we decided that we would undertake the consultation and produce uh, this particular consultation engagement report okay exactly the same as the last proposal Obviously, this, this one is shorter as well, in as much as there's only 10 steps that we have to follow. We're at step eight um, currently um, in relation to this particular proposal. If uh, on the 26th of January, Cabinet approve um, for it to proceed to the next stage, it will then go to building consultancy for them to undertake the building application stage and the tender process. Once those have been completed, we would then submit a full business case to Welsh Government um, for um, agreement to actually proceed with the proposal. OK, so again, as I said, you know, as last time, this is a spectrum of engagement approach uh, where we've gone out to um, residents and consultees to obtain their views uh, to take this particular proposal forward. Uh, within the report, it contains a summary of the responses that we've received um, expressed by the consultees and obviously the children, the pupil voice. Um, it's our response to the emerging themes and then recommendations on how we wish to proceed. So what we're actually proposing to do is create a pupil referral unit for vulnerable learners on the former Partner Friday Comprehensive School site with an anticipated completion date of September 2023. Again, exactly the same as the last proposals, what we actually did, we went out to consultation on the Wednesday, the 20th of October, and it closed at midnight on Wednesday, the 1st of December. As with the other proposals, this particular proposal will also incorporate an element of uh, community facilities as well. Again, we've got an artist impression in relation to this particular proposal. Um, and what we're looking to do here is actually um, sort of renovate uh, the existing uh, lower part of the comprehensive school site, um, put on another multi-use games area with a 3G surface. And then obviously uh, where the existing um, sports hall is, we're looking to develop a new sporting facility. Well, as I mentioned, it won't only be used for the facility for the pupils after school, but it'll also be available for the wider community going forward. This particular proposal actually received 20 responses. So we're going up on each one, as you can see, 70 of which were uh, received through the online survey, 13 were received via email. And again, they all responded through the medium of English. 
Um, so what we're looking to do throughout the document then is uh, produce the report in relation to the various questions that were contained within the document. So what we've actually done here, we've actually broken it down into the areas of responses and the percentage for um, each one, obviously showing that they like parents and local residents and others. So we've broken it down into the percentage of the 20 uh, responses. And again, then in relation to question three, um, the consultees were asked to indicate um, the following statements, whether they agreed uh, with the proposal um, or, or not. And we've broken it down then into the percentage to show you um, those who felt they strongly supported the proposal and those who didn't feel one way or the other. And again, then we've broken them down then in, in categories. So you can see we've broken it down into others, um, parents and local residents. And again, then obviously the response by category, those who felt that they strongly supported the proposal and those who didn't. So we've broken it down into that percentage for you. Again, we've incorporated the pupil voice. Um, this is taken on board um, consultation with children who are currently um, experiencing education other than at school. So it, it was important, I think, to sort of take on board their views. And as you can see, again, they're looking for outdoor space, um, Wi-Fi, Chromebooks, space to chill, animals, benches, science. So we, where possible, um, obviously not all the requests are possible, but where possible, we look to incorporate those in the proposal going forward. And again, then obviously the responses, as I've said, uh, we'll summarise them, we are required and, uh, to summarise them. So we've summarised them within the community engagement report and cabinets will actually receive copies of them as they were actually received. Again, we've sort of broken it down into the themes, the areas that have come through, the number of responses that we've actually received in relation to each area. OK, so the advantages then of a specialist support within the borough um, meets demand of increasing support for children within the borough. People recognise that we're meeting the needs of the children who require provision other than education at school. Um, basically, what they're saying is that it's better, it's better than outsourcing provision. Um, additional resources uh, will uh, provide more accessibility, to, uh, so accessible support and guidance for families. So there's quite a few things here that obviously people have come forward with. Then the impact on pupils and mainstream provision. It says it is reducing pressure on mainstream provision. Uh, we're not equipped to support children with EOTIS needs. Um, children will have a greater access to dedicated sporting facilities and um, obviously you know, just sort of areas of development. And it's quite exciting, I think, some of the, you know, the proposals we're looking to incorporate, particularly in the sporting sort of facilities uh, within this particular one. Um, and how this proposal interlinks with um, the existing pupil referral unit in Glamour I think we've made it quite clear within the report that there is a different key, stage, key stages. So this particular one is looking to accommodate children, uh, key stages three and four, and then the Glanonant proposal is obviously for the younger children. And what they're asking is why don't we include this in? I think it's important um, that we obviously, you know, differentiate between the two areas. So we are currently looking to invest in the provision of Glanonant and obviously this one going forward. And then traffic management, again, same concerns, um, obviously concerns about the uh, proposed Potna Fright site and increased traffic. Uh, local residents are obviously uh, sort of concerned about any sort of increased traffic for the proposed site. But again, as I said, you know, we work with uh, our building consultancy and highways to ensure that we address all these concerns as we go through the process. 
con uh, construction and potential impact. Um, what they're saying is it could have an impact on neighbouring property, residential properties. Um, this particular proposal is sort of uh, within the curtilage of its own grounds, so there's there's no actual properties as it, you know that should have a direct impact as such. And then the support then for the re um, reutilisation of the existing old school building. I think people recognise that obviously we are using um, current sort of provision with actually within our ownership. Again, as with the last two proposals, there was no reasonable alternative as highlighted as part of the consultation process. So we are recommending um, to Cabinet to create a pupil referral unit for vulnerable pupils on the former uh, Cotton Pride Comprehensive School site. So members are asked to again consider the information contained within the consultation, uh, sorry, community engagement report. Members are asked to endorse the recommendation to proceed to Cabinet um, in order that uh, we can then go to full um, planning application and then obviously full business case to Welsh Government. Uh, and again, on the 2nd of November, you were consultees in relation to this particular proposal and you can see there the actual voting. Um, I think it was unanimous that there was 13 people in favour of it. Um, and that again is the report. And can I really apologise? <laughs> because I, I do appreciate tonight that I've had to go through this really, really quickly. Um, I've actually got a small mobile in front of me where I'm trying to actually see the presentation. So I do apologise. I have had technical issues tonight, but I hope I've tried to address and answer all the questions that have actually been raised. I, th I think you've done incredibly well, Andrea, actually. Uh, and we have had th these presentations previously, haven't we? So, um, you know, we've all had a, a, an extra go at this as well. So can I have a um, Phil Bevan, please? Councillor Phil Bevan. You're on mute, Councillor Bevan. You have to no, come it back off. off. There we are, it you're off. off. I was trying to thank you, Andrea, for the work you've done with these three reports. I assume you had a, a vast team of people helping you. No. <laughs> uh, and they're very, very good. But with the vulnerable uh, learners, there are quite a number over the years that we've had to send out of county. Does this mean that we will be addressing that problem? Because it's very expensive, of course. OK, is Sarah available to answer that particular query? <laughs> She's gone home, I, I think. think I should think so. Um, evening, Councillor Bevan. You are right that we have over a number of years um, been working with colleagues in children's services where we are experiencing particular complexities or where children have yeah. significantly complex needs. Um, those children are probably children who require residential provision and that's slightly different from the provision that we're talking about expanding here okay. however what we are of course anticipating is that you know with our expansion of our pupil referral unit we will be able to meet the needs of children in Caerphilly through our own provision um, as opposed to relying entirely on provision that we we saw through a procurement exercise that's not to say we wouldn't still use some procured provision but you know we certainly will be looking at our own resource expanding thank you thank you councillor aldworth please thank you chair um i wonder could you remind me how many pupils uh, are going to be at glan and Nant, please Glad and out. Yes, when uh, it's uh, improved. We so we have agreed to this, but I just wondered the about the figures. In Glan and out, Sarah, if, am I correct in saying we're proposing to actually take another sixteen pupils on top of the pupils that's currently there as part of the proposal? Maximum of sixteen, Andrea, over time, yes. Yes. So what so would be the total for Glan Glan and out? I can see you suggest 80 to 120 for Pantland Fry. I just wondered about Glan and Nant. Okay. 
It would be around 42 pupils. 42. Thank you very much for answering. OK, Councillor Derek Harvard. Thanks, Chair. I'm on a nightmare with my equipment tonight. But um, thanks, Andrea and Sarah, for the work you've done on this. So badly did. And I can go back a long time to when we had very difficult pupils in some of our schools and we just had uh, our ability to deal with them was, was was hardly worth writing down. The, the we, we had, we struggled. I had a situation once, I'm not going to name the school, where the teachers were all ready to walk out because of the behaviour of one particular pupil. And we had nothing that we could do with them and nothing at all. And, you know, it, it was depressing for the teachers, it was demoralising, <clears throat> and this sort of unit can only be positive, to, not just for the pupils, and I don't have to, I don't have to stress the positivity to them, because it, it, it's obvious, but, you know, the staff as well who can't, who have difficulty dealing with some difficult particular children and don't know what to do next, just don't know what to do next. And thank you, uh, Andrea, for your marathon presentation, and you, Sarah. But uh, well done. That's all I can say. Well done. Thank you, Kerry Cole. Would like to come in. Thank you. Just in response to the to um, the comments that Councillor Harvard has made. Yes, you know we really see this in a positive way. But I think the really important thing is to revisit why we were wanting to invest so heavily in this project, and it's because. We have a number of pupils with additional learning needs, which are often unseen. Um, and, you know, they need that specialist provision every bit as much as children in Trinity Fields, for example, need that provision. So we are really excited as an officer team to have your support and, and the decisions you've made to enable us to give these children who are so vulnerable, you know, and their families what they need. And we're so proud of that and we're so grateful for the decisions that have been made. And um you know, this will be a portfolio provision. We'll have some pupils in Glanow, we'll have some in this exciting new um, building as well. But it's all about meeting the needs of children and, you know, taking responsibility for that as an authority. So um, thank you very much for the comments that have been made. And just on behalf of the officers, you know, we're so excited and delighted to be able to have this opportunity. And I'm sure that many, many learners' lives will be changed as a result of, of the decisions you're making around this. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, and thank you for all your contributions this evening. Can I ask then, would somebody move the recommendation, please? I move. Yeah, yeah. I move, yeah. Thank you. Can I have a second, please? Um, well, yeah, I think you had two movers there, eh? so one of them. Yeah, I think, I think yeah. we covered. <laughs> yeah, and if trying. we could then move to the phone. <clears throat> can I do a verbal again, please? You certainly can, Tracy. Um, I am four. Coffee. Thank you. Me too, please, Chair. Councillor Freena Charles, four. Thank you. It's been carried unanimously, Chair. We've got 11 votes for, no votes against, and no abstentions. And with the two verbal, that's 13 votes for. Wonderful. Thank you, Thank you very much there, Mark. Um, we move to um, Ross item 11. Ross wanted to come in, Chair. And Ross, Ross wanted White to come in, I think. Yeah, Ross, if, 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 I, if I could, Chair, just quickly on that one. Is that, is that OK, just on that, the last Yes, reference? certainly you can. Yeah, I, I just wanted to put on, on record my thanks to this committee tonight for supporting these amazing projects again, which together represent another £20 million of 21st century schools investment <coughs> in the education of our learners. And I, I really would, again, also like to give my thanks to Andrea, Sue, Lisa and the rest of the 21st century schools team who've worked so hard on these proposals and running these consultations, especially given the circumstances that we've been in with the COVID-19 pandemic and um, how difficult it is to do a consultation in those times and 
and to, to bring these projects forward. So I, I just really would like to give my thanks to those. Thank you, Ross. Um, I'm, I'm sure that's felt by all the members on this committee. Would you like to um, introduce the next item, item 11, self-evaluation? Yep, thank you, Chair. Um, this was a little bit different. So as I think members will agree, um, self-evaluation of the work we do and its effectiveness, together with taking lessons from what could be better, is a critically important part of how we approach the future in the best interests of our learners. And self-evaluation is a key way that we ensure that we're doing that what we're doing around education is right and has the best, pos best possible positive impact on our learners, which underlies everything we do. The report is about the, con the council's self-evaluation processes and how these processes impact on and feed into strategic planning for the future. This report is also aimed at increasing members' awareness of how the self-evaluation process feeds into the implementation of a revised education strategy. Throughout the report, members will see that the kind of information is collected by the Council and the self-evaluation processes that are undertaken. It also explains the purpose of the information collected and what we hope to achieve and gain from it. As members will have seen, the report also goes into some detail on the service improvement plan and its aims, in particular the key priorities for the 2021-2022 year in light of the COVID pandemic and its effects. A key part of this learning involves the transition to a future new five-year education strategy, which will, have key, which will have three key overall aims to reignite, recover and reform. That is why members will have seen detail in the report about the purpose of a new five-year education strategy and the actions we need to take to bring that about. This will include reviewing the impact of the shared ambition strategy and learning from the continual self-evaluation which has taken place to date. So the recommendation from members uh, contained in the report under 3.1 is that the contents be noted. Um, I believe Paul Warren will be presenting further detail on the report and its contents. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, uh, Councillor Whiting and Happy New Year, everyone. Um, just to go through the um, a bit of detail on the report. So um, I'll bring your attention to and 5.5. It makes reference to monitoring and evaluation reports. Um, and there's a sample listed on the report around some of the ones that were discussed at SMT and with middle leaders in the autumn term. These reports that take place are really important because they allow us to have a real critical eye over all aspects of the education service. And they have a number of purposes. First of all, it's they are responsive to emerging needs. So, um, for example, in the list, you've got one of the reports was a child employment report. And that was a response to checking that during the pandemic, um, pupils were appropriately focused on their learning and they weren't being engaged in work related activities. Um, and as a result, the report detailed how we had um, education welfare officers visited almost a thousand premises in Caerphilly over the last 12 months to check that, um, you know, the legislation was being followed with regards to work and employment of um, young people. And as a result, um, 10 premises were given guidance around work permits. Um, so the reports resp are about responses to the emerging needs, you know, especially during the pandemic, but they are very much focused on moving forward and the strategic plans um, that we have in, in education. So, for example, an attendance um, monitoring evaluation report this year talked about how we'd have to change our approach in support to schools in recognition of the high um, absenteeism or the, the, the much higher absenteeism um, following the lockdown period. And, and in our monitoring evaluation reports, we have monthly updates around data to see if our strategy is working. I think what I'm particularly proud about in our, our processes around self-evaluation is that they're purposeful and they're not just functional. So it's not just about complying with a, a process. And I can think of lots of examples, you know, where discussions we have centered around these monitoring evaluation reports as an example um, have really led to really good outcomes for example um, the re reference in the report is around a report around support for looked after pupils and the report itself is is really good because it details current provision alongside some ca case studies in support for our looked after pupils and estin really kind of welcomed this report and felt it really helpful in understanding the work that we do but through the discussion we had, 
that led to a conversation between the LAC coordinator and the EdTech team. And as a result, we made sure that all of our looked after pupils had enough, um, had access to laptops or Chromebooks in the event that they would then move to remote learning. So this discussion means we don't work, the discussions we have around our self-evaluation um, means we don't work in self-evaluation and it's about partnership working, about how the different people, the many people who work in education and outside can come together for the benefit of others. Just to finally to bring your attention to the strategy that um, Councillor Whiten made reference to. Yes, so we're in a process of consultation at the moment and we're identifying with our all our stakeholders what is everyone's aspiration for our learners in Caerphilly over the next five years and what's the best way we can achieve that and it's very much building on the success of the shared options um, strategy which tells us that by working together and collaboratively with others we get the best outcomes and builds on our vision so there has been engagement that's taken place um, engagement activities we've had a real We've met with all head teachers across Caerphilly. We've met with our partners such as EAS. We've met with um, other teams within um, within the local authority that may not sit within education, for example, sport development and digital services team. And they're telling us about the things that we've really got to focus on in terms of developing our strategy. And many of the, of the themes coming through relate to pupil well-being, inclusion, resilience, equity, standards, provision, all the things that you would expect. But it's really good that when we do finally share this strategy, stakeholders will recognise that they've made a contribution towards this strategy and we are all in it together for the for the better of, of the learners. So in terms of this term now, we've got um, engagement activities involving parents, involving the youth forum, involving school councils, and once we reach the point of saturation, we'll produce that strategy and then we we'll share with you for, for discussion and for challenge. It's worth noting as well, finally, that in that strategy, there will be a set of milestones which will help us monitor the success of the strategy as well. And they will be based very much on standards of attainment, be based on progression, uh, pupils making progression in their learning and about quality provision. So I'm really excited about how things are moving forward and I'm looking forward to in the strategy with you. Are there, are there any questions? OK, Councillor Brenda Miles. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, I was looking on page 109 at the service improvement plan section that lists the priorities, there are seven priorities, which I don't agree, disagree with at all. But then um, but the one thing that I think is missing off that list is something about the more able and talented students. And I wondered if you've done any monitoring or evaluation reports in the period that focused specifically on, on that group of pupils and their, their sort of educational needs. Thank you. Yes, so we continue to monitor the progress of all learners. Um, you're right. Um, I, I think I would suggest that the provision and progress of more able would come under point one, which is about standards of learning, because we talk about all. But I think it's really important that, you know, yes, we talk about the needs of the, of, um, the vulnerable. We talk about the more able. In fact, we talk about all children, don't we? All are as important as each other. So, yes, we do receive reports around kind of the progress that more able are making. Um, but yes, um, it is something that we would include in our strategy. And one th something that's worked really well is um, in terms of partnership with our EAS um, colleagues is that we are looking at the milestones at the moment around what will contribute, what will the types of milestones be within that document to see that, you know, we are doing our job. And we've met, we've talked about, um, I've met with the digital team in the EAS to talk about what should digital skills look like about people's acquisition. I've met with the expressive arts team. I've met with the RE coordinator. And then one of the things, the plan is to meet with the more able and talented coordinator in the Seren part of the Seren project and look about what should those milestones be there as well. So you're absolutely right. 
Thank you. Thank you. Well, are there any other questions for Paul? Well, I think this concludes our meeting then. But uh, I want to thank all the members and the officers today. And uh, I'd like to wish you all a, a very happy new year and a blwyddyn newydd that again, just in case I missed anyone off uh, initially. So um, yes, if, um, if the meeting is concluded, now it's concluded at 19.05. Thank you very much for your attendance this evening. Thank you.